Welcome to Land of House. I'm Seth. Check out this giant mess of wires and electronics over here. This is my hybrid uh, grid tie and off grid solar and hydro system. And uh, it kind of scares me that it's so messy and also uh, just a fire hazard. So I'm going to be moving all of this outside into a dedicated building. It's just going to be a little eight by two, basically uh, lean to that I'm going to put all of this in. So if you will stay tuned to the series. First of all, we're going to be building that little structure. Second video, we'll start moving this over. I'm back behind the house. So for reference, all of the solar stuff is right behind the wall here. And I want to put this little structure right over here. So I've got a little more than eight feet between my dryer vent and the porch over here. So I'm thinking about digging down, putting in some uh, four by fours at the eight foot mark, come up a foot or so, and then build a four foot structure up here. And that will allow me to have batteries in the bottom section and then all of my electronics up top. And I think it will be much better out here. I'm also going to line the inside of this little building with the hardy concrete board. And that way it will be fire resistant. And hopefully even if it were to catch on fire and the whole thing uh, burn inside, it wouldn't ever touch the house. So that's the plan. I purchased treated lumber for the base of this little outbuilding and I want to make a rectangle that is eight foot by two foot. So I need to cut uh, two boards at 21 inches and then we'll make sure that the eight foot boards are actually eight foot. These eight foot boards are just a little bit long so I'm going to cut that extra bit off. I figured that doing the rectangle of the platform first might be the easiest way to get my dimensions on the ground for my 4x4s. Okay, that's the basic platform shape. Now, my first thought was to put this pretty close to the edge of the house, but I wouldn't be able to put the concrete board on the back after I build it. So I think what I'm gonna do is maybe come out more even with this post. That way I can get behind, and I may even be able to uh, pull it away from that vent some, and maybe even move it over uh, towards the middle a little bit so I can get to this side as well to put uh, material on there. So yeah, I think that's the new plan. I'm gonna move this maybe out closer to like right here so that, yeah, I can get to both sides equally. And I think the dryer will have plenty of space down there to blow the lint and hot air. So, well, hopefully there's no lint, but anyway, um, so yeah. And then I'm gonna angle the roof out this way on this so that when the water does fall down here from when it rains, it'll just roll off the front and not end up back here in the back. Okay, I think that's a better idea. So I've got it two foot away from the building. I think this will work out better. I've got it two feet away from the house. So I'll probably just run some conduit from this over to the house and won't have to deal with it being so close that I can't get siding and stuff on it. And I'm sure it'll be nice to get around there for something. So now I'm just going to go through here and dig some holes for those four by fours to go into. So we need one right there. I built the box first so I could put these in the ground and it would make it a lot easier to go ahead and get this thing put together. No measuring involved, just simply uh, stick the four by four is where I think they should go and uh, fill the hole back in. So that's what I'm doing here. Got this piece of PVC pipe that I'm tamping down. All right, let's see how good my idea was. I need to lift this up and find a level point. So hopefully somewhere within these four pieces, there's a, a level that they'll all reach. Okay, that's good. Looks like I'll be able to find level on the post that I've got. All right, cool. 
it's a new day. I was able to get everything leveled off here. So this post right here is just a little bit too tall. I just want to use my Japanese pull saw, link in the description, to uh, get this cut off. It'll just let me uh, cut it off pretty flush here with my other boards. And this is going to hold a couple hundred pounds between the batteries and just the structure itself. So I'm going to make sure I put plenty of screws in here and also these middle supports. Like most of my projects, this one is on a budget. And so I'm using a piece of plywood that I had already stored. This is a three quarter inch exterior grade. So it is able to withstand, uh, withstand the weather. I'm just gonna use my circular saw to cut this down here. I couldn't tell if this piece of plywood was exterior grade or not, so I actually put some of that blue foam insulation underneath. So hopefully that will prevent it from ever rotting. And I may go ahead and put another layer of waterproof something under there so that it's not gonna ever have that problem. And it'll also stay insulated. But anyway, just putting some uh, little two inch screws in here to keep this plywood down. All right, time to get this back wall framed up. So I think what I'm gonna do is just do uh, board on the outside and then every two feet in here. Snow load is nothing around here. Uh, so that way, I'm gonna put a piece of uh, OSB on the inside and then that concrete board to prevent any fire issues if there ever was one. Um, so the uh, plywood will be, or the OSB will be on the inside and that will allow me to attach electronics to that um, so I won't have to worry about hitting a stud um, whenever I'm installing stuff. But anyway, so we'll go ahead and mark this out and then we will um, just frame this back wall and I'm probably going to stop there for today. have four foot walls so just going to cut these eight footers down to two four footers. I decided to go with every 16 inches just because uh, lumber in 2021 is super cheap and easy to find. Uh, no but I think it'll give it a little bit more support on this back wall where all the electronics are. Um, so I'm going to pull the top plate off and just use that to put all these boards onto. And that completes wall number one. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the little walls here on the sides and on both of them will be the same. The front is gonna have a uh, big door. I'm gonna to have to decide if it's gonna open up and have a little kickstand or if I'm gonna have two doors that open out. I've got four hinges, so I just have to look at this thing and see. But that's kind of the working wall. So I'll be able to walk up to this and I'm thinking about doing that concrete board uh, for the, um, the door and have it open up and even have maybe a little lip on it. I don't know, metal lip or something on the top. So whenever I open it, even if it's raining, I can step in here and work and have that little bit of uh, rain cover whenever I open that door. But anyway, um, it's starting to sprinkle right now, actually. So I'm going to go ahead and shut this down 
and we will come back when it stops raining. I worked some more on this without you and got basic framing done. So I put a little 18 inch front wall here and over here, and that will allow for the door to be five foot in between here. So let me kind of back up so you can see everything that's done. So I'm gonna probably do a door that latches down here and then we'll pull up. And that way it'll stick out, you know, five foot over here. And then I'll have a little kickstand that will come up and over to hold this door up. I was just thinking that I'll probably have to access this at some point in the rain. And it'd be nice to uh, be able to step in here and not worry about getting wet or getting all the stuff in here wet. Um, so coming up next, I need to put the roof on. And I don't know if you can see it from here or not, but um, no, you can't. Right over here, I've got some metal roofing I've been storing to uh, use somewhere. I think this will be perfect. So anyway, uh, the next steps are the roof and the door and the siding. I'm super not concerned about how steep this roof is going to be. So I've cut a board here that is 22 and three quarter. And I've got a board back here that's gonna act as, I guess, just the back here for the, the pitch of the roof. And it's just going to be enough that it's going to be angled off and will uh, drain away from the house. And then I'm just using a couple of these three and a half inch screws to just get this attached here. So that right there is going to be the pitch of the roof. I'm going to have a few more of these and I'm going to put OSB on top of this to make sure that it's got something for the metal roof to attach to. But it's just enough that it's going to let the rain roll this way away from the house and should be just fine. And I'll probably uh, stop that OSB right here and the metal roof will come out an inch or two over. Um, I was mostly wanting to keep it close because uh, it's pretty close to head level right here. I just don't want that metal roof sticking out too much. I was able to get the OSB on top here, which you can see right up under here, and that should hold the roof on quite nicely. And then I just put this underlayment here so that if it does rain overnight, that it won't get that OSB soaked. And uh, anyway, so the next step, we put that metal up there, and that's, uh, I mentioned that a second ago, but uh, it's this gray colored metal over here in this little pile. So it'll be nice to use that up. I'm sure there's quite a bare spot. Uh, but anyway, um, it's getting late tonight, so I'll have to work some more on this at a different day. It's a new day working out here on the new power shed. So remember, this is not a house, this is a power shed. So just a quick disclaimer. I'm gonna have some insulation in here and I'm just gonna put Tyvek on the outside and then that concrete board. And uh, I think two layers of that will be more than enough for structural purposes. So I'm gonna do the concrete board inside and outside and the outside will have the Tyvek so it'll be weathered in and um, the insulation is just going to be because i want the batteries and electronics to stay a fairly consistent temperature year round and being back here in the shade i don't think i'll have any problems in the summertime with overheating um, but we'll come to that if it happens but it's okay i'm gonna go ahead and put the tyvek around here and then i'm gonna put the insulation in and hopefully today we'll have the time for the metal roof and also one sheet of the concrete board back here on the back. Okay, just to make sure my dimensions are correct, I've got 18 inches here, I've got two foot there, and then this should be eight, and it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the Tyvek for this. I'm gonna cut eight feet of this because I can cut it in half and get the, uh, the piece I need. I made sure I picked the windiest day of the year to start this. Always helpful. Okay, so here's what I'm doing. 
I'm just bringing the tie back up here to the top of the OSB on the roof. Putting a single staple here. And now I can move around to the back side and keep the edge up here straight. And that way it will equal out down at the bottom. I'm gonna use some of this Tyvek tape to uh, put on the seam back here in the back. I sure am glad that I decided to uh, make this thing so far away from the house. There's a quick look at the home wrap. Now it doesn't go quite all the way up here. I may add another piece just to make sure it's all covered, um, but it goes all the way around. And I added a little bit of tape here in the uh, door frame as well. So uh, I'll have to work on all of that to make sure no water gets into the door with some strips. But anyway, that's good. Now it's time to insulate this whole thing. So let me open up this R13 and we will start getting some insulation in here. And that concludes part one of this power shed build. Whenever I started this, it went way too long, and so I'm breaking it up into two parts. So stay tuned for the next video.